and we're live what's up guys welcome to the fresh Fit podcast i'm here with the bros this is cigar stream let's get into it baby let's go <laughs> back we're what's back. up guys welcome to the fresh trip podcast man we're at tristan tay justin wallet man it's a fucking lit show so far so this is not the fresh and fit studio is it because i've been in the fresh and fit studio before this seems a little bit more familiar to me where, can, where where are we i think we're in romania somewhere in um europe oh this is the one that's on the vlogs I think so. Take confidential. Yeah, we're we're out here, man. So, guys, welcome to the podcast, man. I hope you guys are enjoying it. You guys are seeing something rare here. I'm actually smoking a cigar. Uh, I do this maybe a couple, maybe once or twice a year, if that. So <laughs> we did it one time on a yacht uh, with Tristan and Andrew uh, back in the day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was actually yeah. la- that was the last time, time I smoked a cigar. First yeah, time. which yeah, that was the last time I smoked a cigar was with you guys on the boat. Jesus Christ, long time ago, man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Need to make more of a habit of this. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Keep strong. Miami yacht Aikido. Yeah, exactly. Miami Aikido. <laughs> so um, they already know who the hell we are, man. So can we introduce you guys real quick? We'll start with Justin and then on to Tristan. Yep. My name is Justin Waller. I have an Instagram, jwaller7, and YouTube, jwaller. My name is Tristan Tate. I'm the uh, smarter and better looking half of the Tate brothers. You may or may not know of the other one whose name I cannot mention on any platform because for some reason... He's been banned everywhere. I've only been banned in, in most places, not everywhere. So I'm glad to be here. I'm glad you guys are giving me a platform and a place to speak. I feel like everyone should have the right to speak and say what they want to say, especially when you give a positive message out into the world like I think I do. So thank you for having me on the show, guys. Yeah, and, and Tristan is avoiding some some pussy to hang out with us. So thank you, bro. I appreciate yeah, that. Yeah, literally, literally, <laughs> I had this beautiful blonde girl with me, kissing on me, comes to my house, having drinks with me. And I'm like, sorry, can you just wait an hour and a half on my couch while I set up this stream? And then like 45 minutes later, well, we'd like to leave. I'm not, home safe. <laughs> like, yeah. I'm not going to lie. Any other person would have been mad. But Tristan, he's a player, bro. He knows how to yeah, do it. He's actually he got knows. something else coming. So well, I'm, wait, I'm, I'm, I'm happier to do. I'm happier to be doing this. <laughs> this makes me happier. Like yeah. I do it a lot less often. Believe me. So, uh, yeah, I'm glad to be here. I don't give a fuck. Yeah, okay. yeah, no. And thank you for hosting us as well, man. This is awesome. Uh, with five star treatment, we went and got some food. Yeah. Uh, we went and got some steak, and then yeah. we also what else did we do? And then we went cigars. and smoked some cigars. I actually, had a vodka soda. That was the I first see. time in a long time. I had some too. Yeah, I might it's the beginning of the end, bro. Yeah, this is the beginning of the end here. It's the beginning it's of the end. Influence. It's a bad influence. influence. I've been t- I try, I've been trying to tell him, bro. It's you, a downward spiral. You get around, bro. You <laughs> bad news is over, bro. You're we done. Have, but it's all right. They say you become the sum of the five people you hang around with the most. So although you will drink more. You will also, you know, train more, make more money, and womanize more, and do all the good things more as well. So, you know, it's a blessing and a curse hanging out with me. The, smoke, a, the smoking and the drinking actually actually benefits you in the long run. It's all I would good. say it's there's all my good mom, bad effect. Yo, I'm not gonna lie. My mom will be so proud of me right now. Yeah. I'm, hi, mom. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Yo, but okay. Question. Question. We're in Rom- Romania right now. We're in London. What's the difference between London and Romania? Uh, Romania, you're far less likely to get stabbed for wearing a nice watch. I haven't even got my nice watch on, but and I'm, I'm in my house. Yep. But yeah, no, uh, London is a failed society. <laughs> um, that's the best way of putting it. And, you know, I, I said to you guys in Miami many, many times, when you're in London, be careful. When you're in London, there are people riding around on bikes and walking around the streets, giving you bad looks, who will stab you for the watch on your wrist, who will stab you for the chain on, on your neck, who will stab you for your fucking phone. It has mm-hmm. become a degenerate shithole filled with criminals, and you have no business going to London. Now, you just got back from London. Yeah. Tell me your honest thoughts. Uh, gloomy, and the girls weren't hot. Uh, yeah. Oh, and takeaways. also the girls aren't hot. Yeah. Be- beautiful um, architecture, really great historic um, energy there, vibes, as you guys would say. Um, but, yeah, the, the girls, that was the – I was like, 
what the hell is this? Like, these are wildebeest all over the place. Bro, we are spoiled 100%. for choice in Miami. We're so spoiled, bro. Like, you yeah. go to Target, hot girls. You go to Club, hot girls. Here in London, it was like, bro, everywhere was like, old lady, old lady, busted, busted, busted. I'm like, yo, bust up yourself. No, the, the, for, for any pl- wannabe playboy in London, I will tell you there are actually hot girls in London, but London is one of those cities where it's all private members clubs. And yep. if you're a hot girl, you're a private member of all these clubs automatically because people bring you in because you're allowed plus one guests. Mm-hmm. If you are not in the London club and I have access to one or two just because of my tailor, but like I don't have access to the London clubs because I don't live there. Mm-hmm. I'm not paying 50 grand a year for some membership to a club that I'm going to go to once a year. Yeah, so even true. I'm not in those circles, even though I could afford to be. Mm-hmm. So London is all private members clubs. There are, are hot girls in London, but if you're not millionaire rich, willing to blow money on fucking clubs to go into regular bars and and uh, regular bars and country clubs, mm-hmm. you're simply not going to run into it. Yeah. So yeah, London sucks as a whole, yeah, and, I, and I've been preaching against London for like. I mean, I lived I lived in London and I left London. Yeah. I mean, that's that's the country that I left to move to Eastern Europe, and I'm much yeah. happier here. Uh, you guys have only been here one day, but on Saturday when we do stream again, I hope you guys can give everyone at home a nice, honest review of what Romania is like. Because tomorrow I'm going to show you my city for real. No, yeah. no, no. It's going to be a good time. It's going to be a good time. Uh, I hit these chats real quick. We got Rod, Eric, ten bucks. Go shout out to Fresh and Fit Fam in London. Yo, Tristan, name that flick. My partner is co- is country, but me, I'm rock and roll. <laughs> well, that's me and you, Justin. Isn't it? <laughs> a little bit. Uh, and then we got here um, twenty bucks from. Mind uh, grown twenty. Uh, hi, Justin and Tristan. Love all the take confidential vlogs with Sterling and Andrew. Absolutely, man. Those were those were legendary. Yep, um, some of our best. And they're on Rumble now, right? Are they on on Rumble? Yeah, we're on Rumble. Yeah. In fact, I now, I think this week will cross over the number of subscribers I had on both Tate channels Damn, on Rumble. Rumble. So they tried to Jeez. cancel. They tried to cancel me. And no, no, my no, lives no, are doing no, three or four times the number. My first live did eight times the number. Yeah, I watched lives. it. It was like you guys yeah. had like 140 100, people in there? 147K yeah. uh, live. And my previous record on YouTube was 25. So the cancellation just made us stronger. Wow. Yeah. And we are on Rumble, uh, forward slash Tate Speech or Tate for Confidential. Link is below, guys. Exactly the same names of the channels. And uh, you can catch all of our old content in there. And all the new stuff is coming in as well. And all the new stuff is better than ever before. So, Damn. yeah, the cancellation simply did not work. Monarch is 120 bucks. Question for Tristan. Hey, uh, man, I put every dime into rum. What's the battle plan? We need the war room. We are getting beat over here, and I got some loans for this. To rum? Yeah. Rum is in rumble? I don't R-U-M? Know. Yeah, I think I he means rumble. I don't know what rum, it, rum means. I must- oh, I think he means on the stock market. Oh, on the stock market. Well, the, well, the, the, it went up when you guys joined. The Rumble stock is going up. Yeah, See, it's going up. It's. I think yeah. it's up over thirty. Oh, yeah, over thirty. Thirty-nine percent. Over. Yeah. Th- I was going to say over thirty wow. percent since since we joined There's Rumble. And now, I mean, there are lots of big guys moving up to Rumble now. Russell Brand got a bunch of strikes for talking about the uh, pandemic being a complete waste of time, the lockdowns. Yeah. And Russell Brand has now moved over to Rumble, and he's a very big name himself. Yeah. Loads of other people moving over. Sneeko's just made a Rumble channel. Yeah. Um, everyone have to make one too. Yeah, I feel like that. It's a it's a bridge that me and Andrew have now built and. Open and show people that you know you don't have to live in fear of being canceled there are other platforms that are available to you and especially for people putting out a good message like you guys like sneak like russell brand people don't go on youtube and stumble across russell brand videos very often russell brand has his own fans he has people who like him and he could stream i made a joke actually after i got banned when we were still in discussions with rumble and spotify and other platforms i said you know what me and you andrew we could stream live on fucking Pornhub and run our Take Confidentials and our, our emergency meeting lives there, and we'd still get our audience. It doesn't matter where the fuck we stream. Yeah. So, yeah, Rumble's got all the tech and stuff, though, so a, a very good platform. Awesome. But, um, yeah, the stock's going up. Don't worry about that. All right, so uh, some content goes 20 bucks. Cheers to all the top Gs. The, uh, win stream. Yeah, we got you, my friend. And, guys, from this point forward, we're going to only read 50 and up because uh, I want to make sure that we get into the show. Yep. Myron's BBC, I miss my Miami 304's help. Bro, trust me, I, I miss them right now, too. Um, wait till tomorrow. We'll see what happens in Romania. I'll tell you guys this: I have not seen one fat girl since I've been here. No one. <laughs> Me and Justin have a bet, and I'm losing. This is crazy. <laughs> <laughs> he was like, "I bet you, uh, you're not gonna find one fat girl over 40 years old." And I was like, "Okay, let's see what happens." Under. And I haven't seen one or sure. under 40. Yeah, yeah sorry. Find me one fat girl under 40. Yeah. Caleb Daniels, 50 bucks. Much love. Wednesday take confidential season three dropping. Tristan, first two seasons were iconic. Um, any day now. Just wait and see. It's it's all it's season three. The beginning of it's already been filmed. We're just putting out the last of the season two stuff that when we still had a YouTube channel is now going out on Rumble and season three is going to be dropping real soon. So just subscribe and just wait for the updates. Okay. Nice. And then we got here, Ray Ray, two bucks. Can't believe people like Kitten run the world now. Who's Kitten? So I was on this reality TV show Uh when I was 23. Okay. And it was me still quite broke at the time with a bunch of other people. And the idea of the TV show, it's a very slow paced, boring show, but it's about island survival. They put us on some deserted island in the middle of the South Pacific 
So even as a 23 year old kid, I was, I could make the fire with a flint and a fucking piece of metal. I was building waterproof shelters, digging toilets, doing all this stuff because I'm a, I'm a competent guy. You put me in any situation, I'm going to do well. Kitten was this uh, goth kind of transgender character, femboy certainly kind of character. He disagreed with me on everything. He was a vegetarian. Tried to stop me from killing the pigs uh, completely unsuccessfully, of course. I, I you know, I'm the man. But um, <laughs> and now he left the show, and, and a lot of people are replaying the old clips of, of me and him because of the old, old, old clips is there's a 23 year old Tristan Tate saying to this guy, You know what, bro? You're never going to amount to anything. You can't even handle this free vacation. You're, you're struggling. You're going to be a nobody in life. I'm going to make it because you're. And, and it's very funny now watching it back. Yeah. I'm worth so many fucking tens of millions. And this guy, people are looking him up and sending him hate mail now. And he works in some call center somewhere. You know, so it's funny. I was completely correct. Wow. It, it's funny because that's like female behavior because they put women on. I talk about this all the time on Survivor at Barrel Grills. They had women and men on there. Yeah. And the women, they almost died because they didn't want to. They didn't know how to make fire, number yeah. one. They didn't know how to clean water. And then they were also debating whether they wanted to kill animals to eat. Yeah. And it's like, bro, this is why women can't run society at I all. Know. But you know, I'm old school. I just took care of all the women. Oh, Ashley, Anna. Oh, you can't make a waterproof shelter. You know what? Mine's done. Let me just build yours. Here you yeah. go. Now you got someone to exactly. sleep. That's how it's always okay, been. Yeah, exactly. That's, how, that's, the way, that's the way you should be. Yeah. Well, he's toxically masculine. Oh, no, there you it's go. so yeah. toxic. Yeah, it's, it's toxic only when uh, when they don't get the benefit, right? <laughs> mm -hmm. um, and then, um, cool. So, Justin, what about you? What were your thoughts on London, bro, from us being over there? I'm running the producer thing here, guys. I'm the producer for today. I know you guys are wondering where Andrew is. You want to tell him real quick where Andrew is? Andrew is not in town. Let's say that's the easiest way I could put it. He's not in town. Right. That's why he's not here. So luckily we have a Mr. Producer who's actually competent and actually knows what he's doing <laughs> because Andrew fucks up all the time. So this is going to go much smoother than the emergency meeting live. So. But hold on. We got to sing the song. You have to sing no, the song. No, we don't have to sing the song. Mr. Producer. <laughs> we don't have to sing the <laughs> shows. Mr. Oh, producer. Boy, I escaped it when he left. Got all the Jeez. damn hoes. Mr. Producer. He does have all the hoes to be <laughs> And which, by the way, guys, we're going to do a one-on-one -on -one interview with uh, Tristan on Saturday, yeah. okay? I'm thinking probably 7 p.m. right around the same time, maybe 6 p.m., 5 p.m., somewhere and in that range between 5 to 7. We have a huge announcement on Saturday. Yes, we got a huge announcement. announcement with Tristan Yeah, on Saturday uh, when we do the stream with him. But it's going to be a one-on-one -on -one interview. We're going to ask him a bunch of questions you guys probably don't know about. We're going to show you guys the side of Tristan you guys don't know because uh, yeah. there's some things you guys – Need to know that only people like us, whose friends, would Tristan's know. Like a ninja, bro. So, you don't see him. You don't see when yeah. you see when, when he strikes. It's lethal. Yeah. Facts. <laughs> so, Justin, my bad, bro. What, what were your thoughts on London, man? Shithole. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, and, and he and he's from Louisiana, so like he, so, he's from a trailer park. So that be, that that means a lot. To be yeah. fair, without Justin, we would have been lost because Justin knew where to go and he knew what to do in certain scenarios. And like, honestly speaking, bro, Justin, thank you, bro. Because without you, yeah, we'd have been lost, bro. Justin made the trip way better. Yeah. I would have been stuck with Fresh the whole time. That would have sucked. What? <laughs> what are you trying to say, bro? Come on, man. Oh, um, go ahead, Fresh. Hit the next one. I'm, I'm running the chats right now. Guys, like I said before, 50 and up, I'm going to read. Um, just because we got we already got 8,000 of y'all in here. So number one, go ahead and follow Tate Speech on Rumble. Also, subscribe to Jay Waller on YouTube. I got all their links below. And uh, subscribe to the channel, man, and like the goddamn video. Um, go ahead, so. Fresh. Guys on the panel, we got Tristan here, Justin here, Myron here. We're talking about a bunch of stuff, really. Yeah, we want to know. Let's say I'm an average viewer, right? I want to become a top G. What's the first thing I got to do be, to be a top G? In your own words. You know what? I think you guys are already, you're already nailing it because, you know, you got to be fresh. You got to be fit. This is exactly <laughs> what we preach. Like, in, in other words, because I'm yeah. not an American and I don't speak that way. Um, that's exactly what we preach, you know? Be educated, be smooth, be cool. Be fit, keep your fitness together, get your money right. You know, these things are all very important. And you can't concentrate on just one because nothing's impressed. No one's impressed by the big fat guy who has millions of dollars. And no one's impressed by the gym bro who's in amazing shape who still lives with his mother and drives a fucking shitty Toyota. Nobody cares. You have to have everything covered. It's better to have seven out of 10 stats across the board than any tens and zeros. Mm. So to, to be the top G, um, I mean, that's not even a name that I, I use or give myself. That's something that my brother <laughs> says all the time. But yeah, to be uh, a, an elite member of society or an elite man or an alpha male yeah you need to have every single stat maxed out to, to as, as high as it can go you can't neglect anything how how important is self-improvement to today's dating marketplace uh from your take because i'm here in romania yeah and you know people think i'm gonna go third world i'm gonna go to a poor country i'm gonna get girls i go to brazil I go blah, 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 here and the reality is you need to self-improve no matter what but for you how much of a how important is it for you being an international playboy? Well, I can answer this in uh, just by referencing a conversation me and you had an hour and a half ago. I yeah. showed you a picture of me in January after I had the surgery on my shoulder, after I was fixing my arm injuries. I showed you a picture of what my body was like in January, and I showed you a picture of it now. And I back in January, 
I was still in good enough shape. I still looked good in the suit. I still had over tens of millions of dollars. I still had the big house, still had the fight, nice cars. I was still fresh. I was still fit enough. And I could have had exactly the, num the same number of women that I have now. You have to not base your goals of self-improvement on getting women or getting something else. They have to be for yourself. I'm now much fitter and much stronger. And you saw the before and after picture. Yes. Why? That's for me. It's changed my life zero. I just feel better in myself. When I get up in the morning, I look in the mirror. I'm like, yeah, you're a fucking killer. It's, it's, it, it makes me ready to attack the day better. So self-improvement is, is massively important, but you have to be motivated to do it for you, not for anyone else. And if you do it for you, all of the benefits and all of the women and all of the respect comes afterwards. Absolutely. What about you, Justin? Steel Cowboy. You can't add anything to that, man. Yeah. That's a business. Just understand that there's buckets. You can fill them up. You can make so much money. And and at some point it starts to taper off. So if you don't pay attention to those other buckets, just understand they can fill up. You could be a great shape and be broke. You could be rich and be a fat ass. And so you like like you said, I'd rather be a seven or an eight out of ten in all categories than be a ten out of ten in money and a zero in fitness or vice versa. So, you know, it's never done. You're never finished. Doesn't matter where you go, that voice in your head. And that's that voice that you're paying attention to. That voice that says, Hey, T. It's not good enough. Hey, Jay, it's not good enough. Hey, Fresh, Walt, it's not, you know, you know, Myron, it's not good enough. You know, that's why you're pushing for a million the way you do. That's why, you know, and honestly, man, the one of my biggest fears in life, life is that, that voice goes away. Yeah. yeah. I'm scared of losing that voice. That scares the shit out of me. And that's the same one that tortures me. Yeah. And it says it's not enough, so it's good. And I will say, not just when, when you lose that, every single, almost every single stat you have in life, you never stagnate. You're always deteriorating. You never get fit enough to think, okay, that's it. And if you stop training, you stay the same. If you're not growing, you're shrinking. You, everything is always deteriorating. You forget things day to day if you don't top your knowledge up. It all deteriorates if you don't work on it. So you have to keep that in mind because any kind of complacency, any kind of laziness, it's going to come back and bite you. I, I got to double down what you said on that. Like I've always said, it, if you're not progressing, you're by default regressing because time doesn't stop. 100%. So, you know what I mean? There's no choice. But Since we're on a topic right now, let's get a little bit transparent here. Name one thing you could work on right now to improve yourself because obviously, we're, you know, we're all working on each other here to become, become better. One thing you could improve on right now uh, is your, maybe your weakness, you could say. Hmm. You lead off. I, I can think of a few things okay, that I so got to work on. We were in a car, in a taxi, right? Going to London uh, from Essex. And Myron spoke to me and he was like, bro, Real talk, you got to improve. I was like, what you mean, bro? Come on, man. And he was like, basically, in a nutshell, like, bro. Then we really going to talk about this conversation, huh? I got to. <laughs> All right. I'm going to be transparent here, right? Yeah. One, your speech. 100%, bro. You improved a lot, but you can't stop growing. You have to improve more. Secondly, my fitness. Fitness is important because, like, for example, Myron's fit. He's in shape. I'm not. I'm more fresh, more like lifestyle. However, I do realize the benefit of being in shape. How girls treat you, how people treat you how people react to you, and also your health. So I just say, you know what? Miami, you have a point. I can't hide behind, you know, the jewelry, the clothes. I got to improve. And honestly speaking, bro, when I get back to America, that's what I'm going to do. So I would say for me is speech and also as well fitness. For me, personally. Me being vulnerable right now. Fair enough. Uh, for me, I got to work on my anger. I chased down some idiot in London. Probably shouldn't have done that. But he kept following yeah. us. And I was like, God damn Listen, it. Please, please, I should've... please tell him why you should have done Bro, tell him. I know idiots in London. That, that will be the last chase down you ever make, man. These guys got nothing to lose. And this is what you need to remember. It doesn't make you, when he's talking shit, leave him alone, let him ride off on his bike. Because let me tell you something, that man has nothing to lose. And in London, there is no victory. Because if you beat the shit out of him in London, the Pro Crown Prosecution Service, as it's called, will come down so hard on you, you do three years in jail for publicly assaulting someone. The, the justice system is real and the police are real. And they'll fuck you over for hurting anybody. And you know what? If it doesn't go your way, if you land the first punch and he pulls out a fucking blade, it will be a much worse night for you. Yeah, that will be your last fucking day on earth. So fuck these people. You can't ever let anger get the best of you in situations like that, especially when you know you're in a dangerous place. Like when I was in Romania and that famously, if you if you type Bugatti punched into Google, you'll find the video of me. Yeah, punching yeah, yeah. Well, I will punch some people sitting in my car. I was very aware of where I was. This is a country where I have protection. This is a country where I have great lawyers. This is a country where no one is armed and no one's going to be carrying knives and guns. Yep. This is a country where my name harbors some level of respect, let's say. And these people are sitting on my car. I know I can go and punch them. 
I would not have acted the same way in London. I certainly would not have acted the same way in the United States because I would have got myself shot and I would have got myself stabbed. So it's all about social awareness as well. And to be fair, when I was when I was hitting those people, I wasn't angry. I'm calm. So, you know, you can't let anger get the best of you because yeah. it will come and bite you one day. Man. And for those that are wondering, because some of you guys might have not heard this story, we we got we we're basically going to go do an interview with James English out there in Chelsea, in London. Is that the neighborhood? Yeah, Chelsea Bridge. Yeah. yeah. Chelsea. Yes. One of London's nicest neighborhoods, by the way, where yeah. people do still get stabbed. Yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> Ironic. So we get off uh, the Uber and uh, it's me, Justin, uh, Walt, Tom and our guy Tom in the back. And this dude rides up to us and like says some shit. And I'm like, what the hell? Like, it's like, I don't know what the He's hell like, he was trying to do. Why are you here, fam? Yeah, why are you here? Kept asking us weird questions. Question fit. You, talk, you talk a lot of shit. Like, yeah. What? what the hell? So we ignore him and we walk, right? We walk like a, a block or whatever. And he keeps following us on a bike. So I'm like, what the hell? So at this point, I'm like, yo, I don't want to know where we're going because we're going to go meet up with James English to do this interview, blah, blah, blah. So in my head, I'm like, I'm going to just chase this guy off. But looking back on it, that was stupid. And was. Especially after, you know, listening to you, someone that's actually from London, you know, hearing uh, a bunch of people reached out to me like, Myron, you know, you can't afford to have you die from some idiot that's gonna has, doesn't value life he's a weirdo so you know looking back on it even if i beat him up it's still an l so yeah it's like you'll it do two it years matter. at least yeah so it, it would have been an l yeah. regardless so in my head i was like i gotta chase this guy off but looking back that was stupid so i need to i need to control that i need to work on my anger a little bit more i've been working on it on the show like not kicking hose off as quickly yeah. but uh <laughs> but in general something i need to work on yeah. okay. justin One thing that really comes to mind for me, there's a couple of businesses that I know that I want to get deeper into. And um, for whatever reason, I haven't been able to grind those businesses out to create the systems that would give me a return. Um, other than that, I'd really like to continue working on getting my shoulder fixed. You know, just mm. as, as well as anybody, you know, where my shoulder is. So um, maybe I should press. I would really like to press on that more so I could try to get it completely fixed so I could train the way I want to train. So up to your shoulder. Uh, just, I told my labrum in college. What shoulder? Yeah. <laughs> like that, that's the short answer. Yeah. Man. There's nothing left, bro. But, um, there's some, there's some things that structurally need to be fixed. And, um, I've had four surgeries going, trying to find somebody that'll do a fifth. Four. I've got some doctors that have given up on me actually. <laughs> well, but so, um, I, I don't think I press that enough. I try to work around it and I really just need to find somebody that thinks that, you know, Find a way to get in there with me, maybe do one or two more, find out what it is and fix it. I, I really wish I'd push on that more. And then, like I said, there's a business or two, uh, some opportunities that I wish I would uh, push on more. And I think it's just really for me, it's going to be about building systems and maybe some dedicated staff to hire to, to get those things done. So, okay. Uh, me, everyone knows I'm on, a, I'm on a fitness journey right now, trying to recover my health and get back to the good shape that I was in prior to all this, this injury playing up. And I've had the surgery in January. I'm feeling much better about that, but yeah, I've still got a long way to go. I'm still not in the, the peak fitness shape. I was certainly when I was 27, 28, I was much fitter when I was professionally fighting. I need to get back there. Um, another thing, man, with all of the shit storm that's been around mine and my brother's name lately, all it's done really the only negative impact on my life, because everything about it has been positive apart from the fact that it has massively upped my workload. It's massively up my up my workload, and I need to concentrate and certainly work on keeping my work and play life more balanced. See, when I'm so busy working, I can fall into old tricks that I haven't fallen into since I was 23, 24. The tricks like getting blinded by a beautiful girl. Oh, there's a beautiful girl. All right, she's at my beck and call. She'll come over whenever I say, but I don't realize I'm letting untrustworthy people into my life, untrustworthy people into my home. I'm like, oh, well, she's hot. She'll come over after I finish it. You know, I'm taking my eye off the ball. And falling for shit. I wouldn't say falling for shit, but uh, certainly not curating the my female company as well as I should be. And I've had to let some very low quality people out of my life recently because I'm waking up to that fact. And um, but that's only because I'm taking my foot off the gas work wise. I need to be able to keep my foot fucking down on the floor work wise, go a hundred percent, but also in my personal life with my friends and my women and the people who I meet, really keep an eye on everybody and make sure that I'm only fucking with people I can trust now more than ever. Yeah. Because now's the now's the time where they're going to attack me. Now's yeah. the time when someone untr untrustworthy is going to walk into my life and cause some sort of problem. So I really need to be sharp and uh, and professional about that. And I'm doing my very best. I have a question for you. Ask ask away. Did you did you lose anybody through this? Did mm -hmm. did somebody show their colors? Um, honestly, no. I don't have a single. Well, my my I've lost everybody I needed to lose over the last ten years. Yeah. I've lost them all already. When I was on my way up, I lost all the people who, you know, I, I needed to shake off anyway. All the all the friends who were hangers on, all the people who weren't really happy for me when I did well. So my my friendship circle 
<laughs> my I'm friend, my, my friend, pun intended, yeah. my friendship group has always been very strong. Um, and I always knew that the people who I could count on, I could count on. And when I scrolling through TikTok and I see people like Sterling saying about how, how great me and Andrew are, people like you, I, you know, I didn't, I was shocked by nobody's response. I was shocked by nobody's response because I know the people who I keep close are people I can count on and people who know me for real. So, uh, yeah, no, I didn't lose a single person. Not surprised a bit, actually. It's a yeah. Shame you're still around. <laughs> but, it, <laughs> but if you notice, right, everyone here at the table is successful in their own right. And we still have to work on things daily because we have to improve. So you on the coach right now at home doing nothing. What's your excuse? Yeah. You all level up, man. You have it's to. True. It's Every true. single day. I mean, I mean, right now, guys, I'll tell you personally, I'm working on some real estate stuff where I'm like, I need to do at least another two to three deals before I close end this year. You know, that's what I'm putting pressure on. I'm, I got some offers out trying to close. As you guys know, I'm real big into real estate and trying to create as much passive income as possible. So you got to always be growing, man. Like I said before, just like Tristan said perfectly earlier, you know, if you're not, you're deteriorating if you're not doing anything. You know what I mean? You need to be progressing. If you're not, time doesn't stand still. So if you do, you're regressing by default. So um, cool. So I'll hit uh, real quick some of these chats. And guys, don't worry. We're going to go ahead and do, we're going to go into way more detail with Tristan on the one-on-one -on -one interview. Yep. Yep. We're just doing the show with y'all. We wanted to have Chilling, a cigar, man. talk yeah. with y'all a little bit. Give you guys a little bit of motivation. We got Thomas Jackson here, hundred bucks. Thank you so much. I'll give you a done. No Marco, my friend. Uh, he goes, what the, and I see you guys making fun of me for for my cigar. Listen, man, I haven't done this in a while. All right, <laughs> Sneeko commented earlier. He said, for, uh, "Myron wants to Frank Castle that cigar." Yo, I do, man. <laughs> to, to be fair, <laughs> to be fair, right? Give us some props, man. He's smoking a cigar on camera for the first time. This is crazy, guys. Legendary. Yeah, this is crazy. <laughs> DeMarco. What do you gentlemen consider the core two, three, five, whatever pillars, or as Jay says, buckets of self-development that form the foundation of a solid man? Fitness and finances are obvious ones. What are the others? Distill it down to the fundamentals. This is a really good question. I got one. Simply put, social skills. So, for example, you have money, you have status, you may have fitness, but if you can't be social with people, like colleagues, you know, team members, maybe girls, what's the point? So at some level, you have to work on that skill because that's going to take you away places that you can't from just your, your stats and your uh, fitness. So my thing is like social skills, learn that, learn to meet people, become friends with people, be likable. And that way you can maneuver through life, and get what you want. I got a good one right now. And then I'm going to turn it to them because I know they're going to be able to jump on this. Yeah. You need to be able to identify men that are worthy hang out with. Mm. You need to be able to do this. Yeah. And I don't think enough of you guys understand how critical it is to have guys in your circle that you can rely on, that you could talk to. That you can share personal problems with that aren't going to judge you that go through the same troubles that you do and the same struggles you do when you hang out with dudes that are suckers that don't get girls that are meek that don't go to the gym etc or aren't open to improvement those are gentlemen you don't want to spend time with yep. a lot of you guys hang out with maybe some old high school friends or whatever that are you know whipped by their girlfriends or guys that are you know snitches like they'll sit there and you know sell you out for a girl we've said on the podcast plenty of times you never ever want to hang out with guys that can't get girls because they'll sell you up the river for a woman, and that's the worst thing ever, man. You need to be around guys that have high integrity, that are going through the same thing that you are, ambitious and aren't weak-minded. I'm going to toss it to y'all because I know you guys could talk about this a lot more. Yeah. So well, I could actually combine the two things you said about um, one, uh, networking with with uh, with high-level guys, being able to identify you know talented, hard right, guys, guys in the war room, and two, social skills, teamwork. You know, you know when you're in school and they make you work as teams to compete to complete certain tasks. There are men who have almost everything about them. I've met some guys who are quite sharp. You know, they're smart. They've got the money about them. They're fit. But they don't know how to work as a team. And there are things that about this that are so critical to having strong platonic male friendships. Like if I approach a group of three women at the bar, four women, for example, and I bring them over to our table and here we all are sitting, there'll be dudes who have almost everything about them. But then you'll see them fail drastically. <laughs> Cock block you. Make sure no one gets laid. Really fuck up. Go for the wrong girl, not be able to read signals, not be able to wingman you. And, and you, you won't and, land on a grenade. Exactly. <laughs> won't land on a grenade. And you want some crash and burn, and you're like, bro, I thought you were cool. But it's it's simple, it's simply lack of experience. You know, if you're not associating with other high-level dudes and you can't work as a team, then you're never gonna run a successful business or company with your friends. You're never gonna have a successful uh, like uh wingman game and go be able to go out and meet different groups of beautiful women. Yeah. You're never gonna be able to hook up with your with your with your friends, girlfriends, friends. You know, that's very important. And I feel like me and my brother uh, have have teamwork down to like a 10 out of 10. Like, I don't even need to. In fact, you know, me and Justin have it too. I'll tell you exactly why. I'm going to tell you a short story about me and Justin. Uh-oh. I, I was in Miami. I believe I was in Miami with Justin. 
and we saw two girls over by the bar. There was a short brunette girl, tall blonde girl. Where were you guys at? What was the name of the bar? Komodo? Yeah. My, what the, name, the name of the bar, I don't know. Midtown? Bro, I have no idea. Midtown, I think it was Miami. Sugar. Yeah. Miami bar. Yeah, Miami bar? Miami, the one that turns into a nightclub. It's a restaurant at first. It's, it's in Wynwood. Oh, it's right next to 1-800-LUCKY. Okay, just okay, cool. and, and the reason why okay. I'm saying this so that so the audience can understand yeah. the, the vibe. The cool. place that they're in, guys, is a gentrified area that is up and coming. Think of it as like the Williamsburg of art Brooklyn. District. It's the art district. So where they were at, and this is a nicer area bar in this area that also is like a club as well. It's so, a lounge. Okay. Yeah. So there's a short brunette and a tall blonde, both equally as attractive as each other. So my type, I like the skinnier kind of girl. I said, Justin, Justin, I'm going to make their approach. It's my turn. I'm going to go over and talk to these girls. The blonde's mine. And he was like, yeah, I want the brunette anyway. Cool. I walked over, introduced myself. Hey, girls, how you doing? You know, my name's Tristan. And I could tell instantly from the way that the brunette touched my arm. Oh, hey, where are you from? You know, grabbing me like this. And the blonde was like slightly less interested. He walked over telepathically without saying a single word. He could read the body language of the girls. He could see the, and we immediately switched targets Facts. and he started talking to the blonde and it, not a word had to be said. We didn't have to say, oh, this one likes you. That one likes me. He could just read it. He could just read it. And the word wingman comes from pilots, isn't it? Before radar and all this complicated computer shit, you know what the other guy beside you is going to do. You know what maneuver to pull to effectively attack the enemy. And he nailed it without me having to fucking even give him an eye gesture and a fucking nod of the head. He knew exactly what to do. So those are the type of people you want to hang around with. So teamwork is one of the tenets that you need to learn, whether it be wingman game, business game, whatever. Because if you haven't got that, you're going to be a lonely man, even if you're successful. That skill so. you just mentioned of knowing when a girl likes you or not, important. Yeah, guys will go all the way. Like she's not into. Don't take an L. Stop going at her. Yeah, let your friend take the win because, bro, she likes him more than you. Relax. Yeah, that's very true, mm -hmm. bro. Yeah, and and if you, and if a girl likes your friend more than she likes you, you trying with her all night just means no one's gonna fuck her. Facts. That's what it means. It doesn't mean she's gonna think, okay, fine, I resign. I'll go home with a guy I don't like as much. <laughs> no one's banging her. She's gonna slip your friend her number secretly, and she's gonna go home, and you're both and you're both going home alone. So don't be that guy, please. I think that goes back to I don't want to be friends with any man that's not in abundance, whether that's an abundance of money or the ability to get women, because what happens there in that situation is people get salty. Mm. You know what I'm saying? He liked the blonde. I liked the brunette. Right. But it didn't matter. You know what I'm saying? So didn't matter. I've had the, team, enough <laughs> the, the team's got to win, bro. Yeah. And so if you're in abundance, you have the ability to now be selfless. And that takes me to another thing that I actually personally take a lot of pride in. Me and you talked about this the other day. Is do you remember? Do you remember when that like ten out of ten blue check messaged me on Instagram, and I put it in the friendship circle? I remember. Yeah, in our chat group. Yeah, and Andrew's like hit it three years ago in Czech Republic. Or something. <laughs> 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 Don yeah. DeMarco. Yeah. Obviously. And then, <laughs> but here's what I got to do, and this and this is why I was telling you I take so much pride in it. I got to tell a woman that has never been told no. Andrew said, you're a dickhead. <laughs> <laughs> Literally unfollowed her on the spot. Yeah. Damn. And she was a, Andrew sent like follow-up pictures. Bro, she's a 10. She I is, know, I've met her in person. She is a true 10. Yeah. Like true 10. Yeah, and Polish model. Man, I feel honored to get to do that for one of my friends. Because it once you, because and it's only because of abundance. abundance. And that's why I say I don't yeah. want to hang out with dudes that are not in abundance. Because if my friend cannot take pride in telling a 10 out of 10 IG model that she is a, Andrew said you're a dickhead. So I agree. <laughs> Peace. Yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying? If you can't get there, you can't have friends that can do that for you, then bro, you need to find new friends. You know? We'll go on dates, right? Like we've had the same issue before. We'll talk about maybe what we do for a living. And they say, hey, wait, hold on. I just saw your page. You don't Andrew Tate? You like that guy? He's a dickhead. And we're like, well, you don't like him either? Cool. Good to know. Bye. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I, I got a funny story right now. Shout out to Paul Costinas, by the way, 500 bucks. Bro, I went out with this fucking girl yesterday. Went out with this girl yesterday in London, and she shows up on a date. She's a little bit heavier than her pictures, which already had me pissed off. Lord. Yeah, I was already mad about that. Pounds, yeah, like 20 pounds. Yeah, fucking I was mad. I, I was, I'm math, mapping it at like 20. And if you guys looked at her pictures, you'd be like, what the hell? This girl's hot, but what the fuck? So, so I'm already mad about that. And then on top of that, she has the nerve. Right. I'm like, hey, I'm going to leave tomorrow. I'm going to I'm going out of town. I'm going to go uh, to Romania to go hang out with the, with the Tate brothers. Oh, Andrew. Oh, he's an asshole. He needs to be burning. Say blah, blah, blah. I was like, yo, that's my personal friend. Like, you don't fucking know him. Right. And I like and, and normally you should never debate with girls on a date, guys. Right. Yeah. Like, typically you don't want to do this. But I don't give a fuck. I was like, you know what? Because I don't care at this point. I don't give a shit what these girls say. Abundance. I was like, well, actually, you're wrong. Tell me why he's what, what, what he did wrong. 
and she can't articulate nothing. Well, he says this and this. That's actually not true. Uh, that was debunked on such and such. So I'm like, hand her with the facts. I was like, oh, okay. So it's because you feel this way, even though you don't know what the hell is really going on. And I proved it to her. I was like, you really don't know what the hell's going on. You're just gonna well, my friend said that. Well, your friends are fucking wrong. And well, then I just like left her there on the street and walked home. Well, another Fuck part, another part, another part Fuck is uh, when they say birds of a feather flock together. I don't know if you know this. It's an English saying. People who are like hang out with each other. Mm -hmm. The fact that we're all friends mean we have enough traits and enough things in common that if someone says that they, they truly hated either one of you three, I'd be like, well, bitch, you're not going to like me very much either. Yeah. <laughs> I, mean, like, yeah. I was like, like I was you're, like, yeah. you're insulting me said that. I was by like, insulting them. Yeah. I was like, me and Andrew agree on like 99% of the things. So if you don't like him, you're not going to like me either. So like, fuck you. It's like, true. you know what I mean? And, and like, again, that comes from like that abundance, whatever. And then I actually met a girl later that, that day. That she's like, oh no, I don't know why people hate Andrew. He's whatever. I was like, okay, cool. Me and you are gonna get along. Guys, yeah, the Asian girl. Guys, 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 <laughs> guys. Can I ask a favor of you guys? No. If you ever hear a woman speak about me like that, please fuck her first. <laughs> please, please do it for me. You know, you know, I did this once. You know, I did this. I was once. too mad. I couldn't yeah. do it. I was like, fuck this bitch. You know, I did this once to a racist chick. Yeah. I did this to a racist Hungarian chick. So she didn't actually personally insult any of my friends. But I'm what my dad used to call the undercover brother. So I'm a mixed race guy. Everyone knows a mixed race. Everyone knows what my dad looks like. Yeah. Yeah. I'm I'm super white. I don't pretend to be black. I don't like you know talk black or dress black or use the n-word or anything like that. But I am a mixed race person. I'm, I'm proud of my African American heritage. So I was on a date in Romania with this Hungarian chick, and she starts talking not just like basic racism. I'm talking like real racism. Oh well, you know, black people are dumb and black people are this and black people are that. <laughs> So I sit there and I think, okay, how do I defeat this bitch? So <laughs> if I if I got up off the table and been like, you know what, you're a racist, this, and told her off and walked off, that would have felt good at the time. Too easy. But nothing felt better than what I actually did. I was like, oh, oh, really? I don't really know many black people. I live in Romania. Tell me more. And I let her <laughs> spew her racist shit to me for a good hour and a half. And I was like, okay, and I took her to bed. Yeah fucking blew the woman's mind i was i was the spirit of my enslaved ancestors was running through, <laughs> toby came was, back yeah, was running through every inch of my body during that performance it was probably the most masterful performance i'd ever given legs shaking and shit spasming in bed and i went to sleep the next morning i woke up she's like oh my god i can't wait to see you again i was like well you know tatiana once you go black you never go black. <laughs> and i told her that i was mixed race and you know here's the thing here's the fucked up thing about Red Marco. Here's the fucked up thing about racist people and small-minded people. I would have actually respected her more if she said, oh, you're half black. I, w I, I regret fucking you. Get out of the hotel room. If she had said that, I would have been like, you know what? At least you're sticking by your principles. Yeah, yeah. But she was a bigger piece of shit because she went, oh, well, uh, you look quite white. And how how black actually are you? Because I was like, bitch, what? I'm, you were talking skull wow. measurements last night. And I'd be like, what the fuck are you talking about now trying to be diplomatic with me? Listen, wow. I, I'm glad you had a good night. You know, enjoy your white boys. See you later. <laughs> that's that's crazy, but bro. that's how I defeated her. So yeah, yeah, no, I get what you're saying. Yeah. But I couldn't do that if it was someone insulting my friend. I was just kind of trying to correct her ridiculous views. But if someone okay. actually personally insulted my friend, I wouldn't be able to sit there and be like, Yeah, tell me more about why Justin Moller is a yeah. piece of shit because I I would end up walking. Yeah. 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 It, it just it just like <laughs> yeah. I, I, I mean, don't know but, what it is. But, like normally girls don't get me pissed off, but I, I was like, fuck this bitch. Cause like, you know, like we we've we've made like Countless videos, like, defending y'all. Because, like, I look at it like, you yeah. fucking piece of shit. Like, because the whole world's going at these guys. So I look at it like, I, I don't know. I get mad. Man, again, I got to control the anger a little bit. When people <laughs> insult my friends, I'm like, what the fuck? Like, you don't even fucking know them. So these fine. dudes donate to charity. You guys have been doing this for years. Oh, and the thing on Instagram, like, Andrew talked about donating to charity. People didn't know. He was doing that years ago, guys. Yeah. We never years mentioned ago. it. And yeah. until people started calling us bad names, yeah. I'm like, well, look at all the good work I do. Because I do the good work in secret. I don't, I don't yeah. really and talk about not it. Not to put you on blast, bro, but you guys donate to the church, homeless people, yeah. people at different, like, orphanage. Yeah. Yeah. Orphanage. It's yeah, like, we, we build orphanage. There's an orphanage in uh, Cluj Napoca in Romania. We just built them four new buildings. Just, just about three or four months before all this kicked off and people started hating on us. So this is just something we do on the regular anyway. Because, right. Yeah. You know, I got enough to go around and I to take care of people. And I've been, I lived in a homeless shelter myself from age eight to age 11, me and my brother in uh, the United Kingdom. So yeah. I know what it's like to be the brokest of the broke. So. And I mean, w w as we're going around here in Romania, like people respect you, they treat you well, et cetera. And, and I, I always say you could tell uh, a man's character by the way others treat him. Yeah. You know what I mean? Uh, in public, et cetera. Like they give him good service and you could tell they want to do it. They really respect Even your guy. security is super polite. Super nice. Dude, if you treat them like shit, they won't be like that. I'm super polite yeah, so to them. That's they, crazy. They, they watch me as I sleep. What am I going to do? Be rude to these people? Yeah. Do you know why the guy at the cigar bar is always so nice to me? You know, he came over, whispered in my ear. He, was, yeah. he keeps yeah. the secret boxes of cigars for me. There's actually a very good story behind that. 
I once sent my assistant to that cigar lounge to restock my humidors. And I gave her a box, a list of six different types of cigar to get. She came back with seven boxes. I look at the receipt. I was only charged for six. So what happened is uh, a new employee at the store, this box had been sitting on the uh, table. She got mine, rung them up, put them on top of this box, and then bagged them all up and sent them away with my assistant. So I knew that they'd give me a free box of cigars. Romeo and Julieta Short Churchills. The box is worth about $250, 250 euros. So I smoke them, cut them up, smoke them, whatever. I was busy. A few days later, I go into the cigar lounge, and I, I told the exact guy who we spoke to today, I said, my brother, count your Romeo and Julieta Short Churchills. I bet you're missing some. He goes, yeah, we're missing 25. We're missing a full box. I said, you accidentally gave me that box of cigars. He went, so did you bring them back? I said, no, no, no. I'm smoking them at home, but please charge me for them. And he was like, <laughs> You are asking me to charge you for cigars that no one knew that you had after they left this shop. And, and I was like, yeah, I don't want anyone getting in trouble on my behalf. I can afford my cigars, and I like you guys, and I like the staff here. Now you saw the way the guy treats me. Whispering in my ear, look, we got a box of this come in. I haven't told anyone. I put it to the side to you. I took that box home with me today. It keeps all the good shit from me. Right. You treat people for, with respect, and they give you respect back. That's why, that's why you see people around this country always treat me very well. He's not treating me very well because I'm his fucking you know, a friend. I don't know the guy that well. But I just gave him that one gesture of respect three years ago. Every Christmas, they give me boxes of cigars. That exact lounge. So, yeah, you got to be a good person, man. Because be. it comes around. And if you're a bad person, that comes around, too. Facts. Yep. It does. Justin, sorry, you were going to say something? Um, I was going to say something about, we, you were talking about the race thing. Mm. And I think it's really important that sometimes people get mixed up. Like, rich people are bad. They had to cheat people. I think that's a good example. Yep. And the thing about racism is this is, like, I don't, and, and I know all of you feel the same way. I don't have time to worry about what race somebody is because I'm too busy making money with winners. <laughs> I, feel, I feel like, truly, I feel like worrying about race is for broke people. Yeah. No, it is. 100%. That's exactly what it is. Yeah. yeah. Like, like if you, or if you are a guy that I can make money with, I don't have time to worry about what color your fucking skin is. I see is. green. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah Literally, bro. Yeah. Like. You know, and 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 that and that kind of leads to the next thing, which is what Tristan was telling that story about, is that people that do well in life, they can't do well if they're out there fucking people over. Mm. They can't because then you get a reputation of fucking people over, and then nobody trusts you. And if there's no trust in business, there's no money to be made. You know what I'm saying? It's like it's it's easy. In fact, the other day you were gonna send me some money for something, right? Yeah. And like you got busy and y'all were gone. It's like, and you were like, oh, my bad. I'm like, dude, I was not worried about that shit at all. Almost, almost six figures. Yeah. And I was just, and I was my, my, I didn't have access to my crypto exchanges. I was in Italy fucking driving around supercars. Like, yeah. Well, just wait, wait a bit, wait a bit. Yeah. Fucking, send it, send don't it give end. a fuck, yeah, bro. You just, you just went cool and sent a heart. Yeah. <laughs> That's it. You ain't going to chase me. Cause you yeah. know, what the fuck am I going to do? Screw over one of my best friends for fucking for, for what? Tens of thousands of dollars. What the fuck? Yeah. For what? So yeah. So yep. a part of what being social, right. Is adding value. And you can add value in many different ways. Friends, family, people you don't know. But, like for example, the cigar uh, scenario that you just gave, right? Mm -hmm. You said, you know what? I could be a dickhead and say, I got free cigars. Bet. I'm going to just keep it. You say, you know what? No. I'm going to go back. Say, hey, mister. Here's some cigars that I took. I'll pay for them. That's adding value. But that one action that you did built, guess what? A beautiful relationship with that person. Yeah. So adding value can mean many different, many different, different things, guys. But, like, the main fact is that, like, you can add value anywhere in life. Just make sure that you do it the right way and the correct way. So you were gonna say something, Tristan? No, nope, no. Nope, okay. Um, some more chats. Yeah, I, I got some. Yeah, let me hit some of these real fast. We got uh, fifty bucks from uh, Jerry C. Fit goes. Still waiting on. Thank you. Still waiting on that proper wingman show. I suggested. Damn impossible to find one. Fire panel right now. We'll be joining y'all one day. We could. You know what? We could talk about wingmanning a Yo, little bit. Question on this one. Who's the best wingman in the room? Let's do that debate right now. Myron, who's the best wingman in the room? Well, I'll I'll say this. This is a pretty good wingman. Um, it was, can I talk about today's date situation or no? Uh don't talk nah, about it. No, 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 no never mind. Have today. No, 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 no. Later, we'll talk no, about but, another time. Guys. But what I will say is, I don't think that we have been out looking for women enough with each other to 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 judge who's the best wingman. But I don't think it's it's whether or not somebody is the best. I think that everybody has proven themselves to at least another person in this group. Yeah. The first yeah, time I sure. met you guys. I mean, you helped me with that blonde chick who was on that boat. You know, it was all you know. It was all fucking. Oh, yeah, it's about baby the man. Fuck you, big me up before I got there. She's like, yeah, I heard about you. I mean, heard about me. And this was three years ago. Yeah. Before anyone would have heard about me organically. <laughs> yeah. You know, you guys had already bigged me up, and no, that that worked out for me, all right. Yeah. So you know, and Justin's obviously being man. Me, God knows how many times. I don't even fucking know now. So I know everyone here has the moves. It doesn't matter to me who's the best. All I know is if I'm on a double date or if I'm with a girl and she's got a friend, I know that I'm in safe hands with anybody on this table. Yeah. 
Yeah. And I think that's the most important thing. That's why you don't want to be out with like losers that don't get this stuff. Like guys, you don't understand that having a bad wingman is more painful than having <laughs> going out by yourself. You might as well just stay by yourself if that's yeah, the case. Facts. Like they're going to hurt you more than you might as well just be by yourself. You know what I mean? Because if you have a bad wingman, he's going to lower not only your value, but he's also going to lower his own value in the same respect. The next thing you know, the girls are going to want to fuck with either one of you guys. I look at it as like having a dinner. If I'm going to eat, all my boys are going to eat. So yeah. you know what? I'm bringing food for everybody. I got my food. You take your food. We all eat together. Yeah. And also, you know, let me tell you a little story about my cousin. Everyone knows my cousin. Luke. Yeah, my cousin. So he, one day, we're out drinking and uh, we get home. It's about 1 a.m. Me and Luke are both drunk. I've got these two girls, both pretty. They want to come over. I said, Luke, this one's for you. This one's for me. He's like, oh, bro, I don't know if I can do it. I'm fucked up drunk. I said, Luke. Get your shit together. I need a wingman. <laughs> he gets there, and he he's uh the girls come to this exact table we're sitting at now. In fact, I've got photos. I'll show you the photos tomorrow. It's going to take me too long to find them. Mm -hmm. um, and Luke's messaging me, bro, I'm fucked. I'm going to throw up. I'm going to ruin your fucking wingman game, blah, blah, blah. So he was man enough to know that he was going to fuck it all up by throwing up or something. He ducked out. So I said, Luke, you know what? Don't worry about it. Leave. You know what happened next. You know what happened next. So Luke goes to bed. Time to mark up. Yeah. <laughs> so Luke goes to bed. I'm like, don't worry, girls. You know, my cousin feels don't sick. Well, well, you know what? It's fine. You know, you're too pretty for him anyway. I was making little, little jokes that Luke wouldn't mind me making, you know, pouring the drinks around. I ended up fucking both of them right here on this table. So nice. like, good. But he was at least man enough to know that he wasn't up to do tasks. So that's important, too. That's important, too. You know, so it's not just about knowing the right moves all the time. Sometimes the right move is to walk away. Yeah. And, you know, both those girls, at, you know, at, they both knew who I was. You know, Luke was just like, Tristan's got this. Tristan's going to handle this. And it, it, it all worked out well. Yeah. So Shout it's critical, Luke, man. The man. Shout out to Luke. Bro, Luke honestly, Andrew's bro, cousin. Luke is one of the most underrated men I know. He's one of my favorite people. Truly. He's one of the most talented, hardworking. I know you bust his balls. I do. But, in but I all agree fairness yeah luke is one of the most legit people nobody knows yeah he works in the shadows yeah from, from what i can tell he does a lot yeah behind, behind the but, scenes but i have to bust his balls he's the youngest one yeah yeah it's like how yeah. i make fun of tom right yeah, yeah, it's yeah. like you got to bro. Yeah, you, you got to, to do it's it it's absolutely necessary it, it but... builds character and builds strength yeah yeah I, i'm a firm believer i've said this before i think uh guys gotta get bullied when they're younger mm. it, it's, it's needed you know people i would be a lot of people got mad at me oh man that's so toxic blah blah no, you need to feel pain as a man and grow up. Like you, you need to feel pain in adversity. You're not going to, and you need to feel like one day I'm going to be on that team. Yeah, you know, you know yeah, I'm the underling right now. Bro, I've had that in offices. I had that certainly at the kickboxing gym. Yeah, when I was just a kid, and then you know, I ended up in the elite circle of fighters, bullying all the new kids. So yep, it's just the way it's pressure the way, creates yeah. diamonds yeah, it's, it's or way, breaks it. It's the way men come up. Yeah, and, um, and there's nothing wrong important. with that. That's yep. the important yeah. part. You you got to test him to make sure he's not going to break. Yeah, because it's going to get harder. Case in point. I, I know for a fact I wasn't here. I know that Luke, he already works 18 hours a day. Bro, he was working 23 hours a day. Double down, bro. Yeah. He's a savage. A lot of times he'll lie to Tristan, say he doesn't feel good just so he can go upstairs and, and work on the sales guys. Yeah. Because every time I stay here, I stay in Luke's wing of the house. And so me and Luke share a bathroom across from one another. And I hear Luke do the thing talking to the sales guys. Why? We're down here wrangling. Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> like legitimately. Yeah, I, I, it's very Luke is truly, I Luke. truly one of my favorite people in the world, bro. Wow. Yeah. Uh, Earl Lance goes. Every man on this table has either directly or indirectly contributed to the life I live today. Thanks, guys. Thank you so much, my friend. Thank you. I appreciate bro. that we motivated you, and, th and that's why you can't cancel the truth, man. That's why you had you know hundred forty some thousand people watching you guys because guys need this information like yeah. this type of content is really needed because we live in a pussy ass world nowadays and it shows that they left the platforms to come see y'all yeah. yeah. i'm yeah. gonna go ahead and kill the facebook and twitter and twitch stream by the way so come on over to uh youtube aka the forbidden uh, susan's app uh <laughs> <laughs> come on over to youtube guys uh sorry go ahead fresh hit it oh no do we have any more uh here i'm gonna have to pull them up so okay so i guess i want to ask this uh tristan this is more, more for you you're a man of means man of uh value how do you manage dealing with these girls in business? Because honestly, I struggle with it. Three to four days is tough, bro. And then doing business as well, like man's on my ass for that. Like, bro, that's a full time job, three or four day. How do you handle it? I handle it in, in one way, and Justin already knows my methodology. There's no organized system to it. The moment you try, and I have tried as a younger man, thinking, okay, I've got these pretty girls, I've got this much work to do. Let me try to organize this somehow. You're always going to fall flat on your face because you're going to find you're going to find that you end up doing things that you don't want to do. 
You have to understand that wherever, whatever it is, whether you want to just work on your relationship with your girl and, you know, make her into your wife and build a beautiful family, whether you want to work on your business, whether you want to be a bit of a playboy, you know, spin plates and have 10 or 20 girlfriends, you have to look yourself in the mirror and think, do I really like doing this? And who am I doing this for? The fact that I'm doing it for me and I'm living my life for me to make myself happy has made my system very easy. And my system is no system. I wake up in the morning and I think, why am I doing this? Is it because I want to? Yes. Okay. I want to do this. And that is a natural filter between, uh, let's take women that you date. Uh, I once had a girl, very beautiful girl. I, she lost her virginity to me when she was 19. I had her until she was about 21, about two years. And in that two years, I saw her a grand total of maybe 20 times. Now, when she eventually said, you know what, Tristan, you don't treat me well, blah, blah, blah. And you know, moved on with her life. I thought, ah, oh, fuck. Oh man. I wish I had her back for about half a second. And I thought, there's a reason I only saw her, saw her 20 times in two years. And the reason was because I didn't want to see her. So that's a, that's, a good, that's a good natural filter to lose the undesirables. Now, whether I can look back on her now or certainly the week I lost her, look back on her thinking, oh, wow, she was so pretty. And, you know, maybe I should have tried harder and stuff. The fact that I didn't was an affirmation to myself that maybe she wasn't the girl who I actually liked. Maybe she wasn't as special as I thought she was when I lost her because I clearly didn't put the effort in. So I manage it by just doing what I want and making sure that I'm living for myself and on my own terms. My system is no system. The ones that slip away, good. Let them slip away because I don't want them. The ones that stay and the and the, and the, the girlfriend I have now and the, the relationship I built with her is wonderful. Why? Because I want it to be wonderful, you know? I obviously like something about her. It's not something that I've scheduled in and made some organized super system for. It just naturally occurs because that's what makes me happy in life. So, well, so when, yeah, live when Rolo yourself. goes well, so back and reviews this video, he's gonna he's gonna call that you know him living through his point of origin. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's like, point of origin. Yep. Yeah, he he's living through his own point of origin there, which counterintuitively interesting that I found is that when you live that way, it actually is the only reason that girl didn't. That that girl did not break a whip up with you in two weeks. Yeah, she stayed for two years. Yeah. You know, because she knew you were on some kind of mission to do what you were supposed to be doing. Right. And she just wanted to be a part of that. Yep. If he would have gone out of his way to do shit he did not want to do, then she would have felt that, and, that. and she would have left sooner. Yeah, she Facts. would have respected me a lot yeah. less. And, yeah. um, so a special mention in the chat. Yeah. Academics is in the chat. Shout out to AK in the chat, yeah. man. It's shout King Academ the Academics. Is that his channel? Yeah. Oh, okay. Shout out yeah. to Academics, man. Don Marco for him, man. <laughs> Um, that's a very good point you brought up, though. Like, doing what you want to do, because, for example, I find myself sometimes doing shit I don't want to do, because I want to make sure everyone's happy, everyone's good, but it's like, I'm not happy doing those, those activities, so it's like, you're right. Men of point of origin, do what I want to do. Yeah, and, and the truth is, if you do what you want to do, and you meet that woman, or you meet those women who you really want to be around, and who you really want to spend time with, and that's who you're investing your time with, because you super enjoy it, that's how you keep everyone happy because they feel that. People pick up on that. Yeah. Uh, same with friends. If you had to force yourself to hang out with some dude you didn't like, people like, fuck, I don't like hanging around with these dudes. Even when you said, I don't want to be in anyone's hair, man. I might just stay a couple of days. I said, fucking stay two weeks. Stay as long as you fucking like you. because I like hanging around with you and you like hanging around with me. So it's not a chore. And that's how you make people the happiest. You don't make people happy by giving them time that you don't want to spend with them because people pick up on the negative energy. Yeah. you know. And that's how you curate your, your, your group of friends, your group of women. And that's how you... you you keep the happiest relationships going. If you're not, if your heart's not in it, then their heart isn't going to be in it either. Very true. Guys, like the video, by the way. Uh, yeah, like the likes. goddamn video. Yeah, and dropping some knowledge today. Yeah. Facts, bro. Nico, 50 bucks had earlier said, uh, Myron has a, grown a full head of hair since leaving Miami. Bro, now that I'm not debating these girls, I feel a lot better. <laughs> uh, get, get my hair back nice and slowly. Um, and then we got here, um, 50 bucks, blue bag is goes, Bucharest is lit. I used to live there and he's right. No fat 304s. I used to make a lot of bad decisions and I think it's called be away, get in there. Yep. Uh, some content goes jealous Titan MR Mr. Producer is the best producer ever. Cheers to Andrew, the real top G. Don't worry, guys. We're gonna do a stream with him later as well when yeah, he gets we'll back. Producer. Good to see you, man. Corn Dog Forty Six Smith goes. Blessed say, brothers, the world needs more of your message. Bestow upon the infidels the message of God. Okay. Um, <laughs> and and guys, more guys in the chat making fun of me for my terrible cigar technique. Fantastic, guys. I don't smoke. <laughs> don't worry, they can't see me, bro. Yeah, they, and they can't see fresh. So fresh is black. His, uh, his is out already, by the way. I'll, just, <laughs> I'll, I'll put him on blast right here. It's gone out already. I haven't had to relight mine once. Um, but um, I'm not a supposed cigar smoker, bro. <laughs> Come be some slack, dog. Oh. Uh, and, and do you have anything, uh, Justin? You want to say something? Else? Oh, good. Okay. okay, big mo in the house. Wait. While they hate, we create by real estate and we lose weight. Glad to see you guys enjoying yourselves. You guys deserve it. 
trust fall challenge coming soon. Yes, once you lose the weight, my friend, we will definitely do the trust fall challenge. Oh, and God. then the old saint, I really want to know. Podcast shout out to you, my friend. Uh, the brother's right. You must stay on your tippy toes here in the U.S. Drama will jump off anywhere, anytime from the hood to the suburbs. Great conversation, fam. Absolutely, man. Just want to have a roundtable talk with y'all. Nigerian flex and goes. It's like watching Spider-Man Homecoming, the FNF version. Absolutely. Um, you guys have been asking for this for a minute. So, yeah. you, you know, we had to set up and make it happen. Deal saying, again, uh, Don DeMarco, for you, my friend. He goes, 100 bucks. Uh, looks like you boys have found some proper villains. LOL, just kidding. Salute to the panel. Much respect. Stay safe. Keep leading from the French gentleman. Thank you. And then uh, we are very reserved. That's just, oh, no, that was from the show from before. Oh, no, this is the deal saying from before. My bad, guys. Uh, I'm doing a million things right now. Um, so producer. Yeah, go ahead, Fresh. Makes the best show. <laughs> I just got to mention, right? It's 3 in the morning right now. And just yeah. so it's nice enough to say, you know what? We have it's a set up, film in my house, and thank you, brother, because, I mean, shit. We're all staying in my house. Yeah. <laughs> I know hotels. So like, this is where we live. Thanks. As long as you guys are in town. Yeah. Thanks. No, man, I appreciate you opening up your home to us. Uh, like I said before. All right, we're back. We're back. We're back. We're back. back. We got y'all. Don't worry. We got canceled, but we're back, baby. Matrix uh, <laughs> attacks, man. Matrix attacks. <laughs> yeah, we're back. Um, and now I'm on the stream. Well, so the last thing I was saying, guys, before we got cut off is basically, long story short, I used to work in law enforcement. When you work in law enforcement, you really get a brotherhood with the people because you're hitting houses together you're in really dangerous situations. And you got to be able to take each other's back.
All right, sorry guys. Um, we had cut out there for a bit. The Matrix is trying to shut us down. Uh, but, but we're on we're on uh, Wi-Fi right now, guys. So um, what we'll do is we'll go ahead and just do um... last thoughts. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Woo! I don't know about you guys, we're, but I love last thoughts. Yeah, yeah. We're gonna go ahead, guys, and have you guys uh, do a stream again Saturday, guys. I'm thinking between five to seven p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We're gonna do a Tristan. It's gonna be probably a long interview. We're gonna go deep into Pause. no homo. Pause. Uh, <laughs> Tristan's past. You guys are gonna get to know the man a lot better. Like we know him. Because there's a lot of things you guys don't know about Tristan Tate. Trust me, when you guys find out about him, you guys, you guys aren't gonna be screaming for Andrew as much in the chat. I'm telling he's you, he's an assassin with yeah. the most clean face possible. Yeah, you know the funny part. I need to get is, to know this guy. We we'll never know about him because he's never gonna brag about it. Yeah, talk G. <laughs> I can't wait, man. I can't wait. Saturday, we're gonna kill it. It's gonna be an amazing stream. So, uh, Justin, I'll turn it to you, brother. What's your final thoughts here? Where, where can I find you? Comments for the chat. Glad we're here. We're going to get you guys smoking cigars correctly. Oh, God. By the time we get out of here. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Might go meet Count Dracula, although he might be sitting at this table. Dracula. And you can find me on YouTube, Jay Waller 7 You can also find me on Rumble, which I think Thomas is going to put the link in because so, for some reason, my link can never go in y'all's bio. So It's weird. Yeah, it's weird. But fuck Type it. in Justin Waller. It pop right up. You got and it. And if you get want to get in the war room, go through Justin, guys. Right. Yes. He'll Talk hook you Justin. up. Go through right. Justin. He's probably one of the best guys to go through. He'll get you in quickly. So a lot of you guys know what need a. We talked about this, a brotherhood. The Worm's a fantastic place to do it, guys. And you want to definitely go through Justin. It's Jay Waller 7 on Instagram. Send him a yep. DM, right? Yep. Is that the best in a know? world where man had, a, man had his loss, is found in the war room. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think that, like you were saying about used to be a policeman who used to kick indoors. You had that feeling of brotherhood. You used to be a football player. You know, um, you had that that the brotherhood. You know, uh, I have a bunch of ex-military guys in the war room, ex-secret service, special forces guys. I'm a for, uh, former kickboxer. That camaraderie that a lot of guys find in their younger years, they lose when they slip into clown yes. world. And I yes. feel like it's... It, and it's, it still exists in the war room. But yeah, if you message me, I'm not going to reply. If you want to get into the war room, you know, the best way to get vetted and to get in quickly is to go straight through Justin. So message him on Instagram, um, you know, DM him anywhere you could find him and, and he'll get you in. Yeah. Yeah, they're going to vet you guys. So just you, be prepared. You want to learn how to see the clown. <laughs> <laughs> Justin, where, where's the clown, bro? Can you see him? What the? <laughs> Yeah, guys. So we're gonna do we're gonna actually do the podcast with Tristan in their studio, guys, which is hardwired internet. We want to kind of do this for you guys to sit down, you know, in the war room. I don't think have, has anyone seen a stream in this never part? ever. It's never been done. This is the first, first time, time never done. done. First, first time, time. Special. right here, fresh or fit, man. So, um, guys, check out all the guys. I put all their links below. Oh, um, Tristan, last thoughts on the show? Do you want to give to? Me? Oh, no, that's it. You guys have covered everything. I said, if you want to get in the war room, go through Justin. You guys know where to find me on Rumble. Instagram is still up at Talisman Tate Shadow Band. You got to type in the whole name. Um, don't DM me, you know, I, I literally won't see it, but, um, any, anyone who's serious about changing life and getting the war room, speak to Justin. That's and what's the say. rumble, uh, link? Take speech or take confidential. The links are in the, uh, description, in the description. Already. Down so, down guys, here. we're going to vlog to as well. Uh, Archer to Romania with, uh, Tristan and, uh, Justin as well. It's going to be on the Fresh Print Seal channel and also on Patreon, what we can't put on YouTube because guys, Patreon, we have a double date there. We have also, also as well, the incident with the guy. So if you want to see it in full. It's on patreon.com yeah. yeah and there's going to be a lot of stuff that you're not going to be want to post on youtube that you're going to see i'm going to show you my city for real tomorrow is going to be no streaming uh, just recording getting footage vlogging uh living life basically with some cameras around so yeah. i'm going to show you guys how i live a little bit i'm yeah. excited guys just i got, I got to the chat this bro yeah go ahead it was so hard to get Myron to come here bro you have no idea <laughs> it was like bro you sure you want i don't to like go, leaving bro? miami like i don't like leaving you know, because you're focused on. on I, I want to hit one million so bad, you know. I get it. So we need a break yeah. sometimes. But we, so we they, they, these guys dragged me out here, so I'm yes. here. <laughs> you're here. You're good. Um, so yeah, guys. So the itinerary. So tomorrow we're gonna be hanging out. We're gonna be filming some footage for y'all, and then Saturday we're gonna do a one-on-one -on -one interview with Tristan. Hopefully, Andrew will be back, and then we'll go ahead and we'll do an interview with Andrew as well. And then you know, you guys might see us on an emergency meeting. Who knows? Who knows? Who knows? Anything's possible. You know what I'm saying? You might see the cow, the steel cowboy, the top G, and then the talisman himself, and you know. There's some random Arab guy named Myron and some black dude named uh, Fresh. Can you see me? On an emergency meeting, man. Y'all might see us there, man. <laughs> Shut up, Justin. Shut up, Justin. Well, Myron's here? <laughs> just so you know, I'm going to say this right now. I'm the ultimate wingman. Oh. Help so many people. Hold on, hold on. I took my own horn. But look at my, my videos on YouTube. Look at my receipts. I get niggas later, bro. Try, I'm hitch. I'm hitch, bro. Yeah. Keep it a thousand. Just saying. All right, man. We love y'all, man. It's uh, it's what three a.m. here, yeah. four a.m. here right now, yeah, guys. Three a.m. Yeah. So yeah, uh, we what? It's been twenty hours. We haven't slept, right, Justin? We woke up early this morning. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, man. And then the internet's kind of. Uh, we don't want it to tap out anymore and lose the quality of the show. We got, love you we guys. Got, and we got that real estate deal. Chat. We got one more super chat. Uh, okay, Thomas Jackson. Okay. Uh, let me see. Where is he it? Says, at? 
Go ahead, what read it. Gentlemen, consider this the core. To, oh no, we did this one already. We read that one from before. Oh, never mind. Yeah. Cool, no, we love y'all, man. We catch you guys here back in a little bit. Give you guys a little bit of sauce. Peace. Peace.